Oh my God, one of our most famous and fun and incredible advanced muscle building programs is MAPS Split. This is an advanced bodybuilding, body shaping workout program. And one of you lucky viewers is going to get it for free. This is all you got to do, right? Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode to help us with the YouTube algorithm. All right, so here's the truth. We want to get ranked higher, so we're kind of hacking the system by giving away free stuff for your comments, all right? That's what's happening right now. So again, leave a comment the first 24 hours, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and if we like your comment, you got to make it interesting. Don't just be like, comment. Make it a good comment. If we like it, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to MAPS Split. Also, before we get to this incredible show, and today's show was so fun, it was so awesome, you just wait till you see what happened on the show. But before we do that, remember... We have combined MAPS Anabolic with the No BS six-pack formula, put them in a bundle, discounted them tremendously. So you can get both right now for $59.99. That's the savings of over $100. If you want to sign up because you're smart and you want to look good and sexy, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. I did a workout the other day where – I haven't done this in a while – where I do like a pre-exhaust superset. So I did uh, – like for back, I went really heavy – dumbbell pullovers to pull-ups to pre-exhaust lats. We've talked about that before on the podcast. Yeah. And I haven't gone, because it's the first exercise in that lift, that, that means I can go heavy on a dumbbell pullover. And we've talked about the dumbbell pullover mm. before. It's, it's in a lot of our programs. And old school lifters used to use it as one of their strength tests. They would actually compete with a dumbbell pullover. Believe it or not, it was ranked higher at one point than it was actually, like a, they a used bench to, press. Yeah, when was that? Because oh, that sounds strange. This is like the 30s and 40s. They would. This was like a, a not necessarily compete, but this was an like a staple oh, okay. heavy lift. Okay, you say compete, so I thought like they actually had competitions around. No, like the same way like when we were in high school, right? It was bench press. How much do you bench? Yeah. Right. Yeah. In those days, it was like how much do you overhead press? Yeah. And what's your barbell pull? How many people can you uh, leg press on a bench? Yeah. So well, so ch <laughs> <laughs> you see that? That's, two, yeah, that's 2000. That's 2010. <laughs> yeah, that's 1910. 1910. Yeah. Well, yeah. so check this out, right? So I was I was talking about this. I was Jessica was like, "How was your day?" And, I, and she's like, "What was your workout like?" And I was telling her, and I'm like, "You know what's weird about a dumbbell pullover is it is a, technically a single joint isolation movement, but it feels like a compound lift in yeah. terms of how it affects the body." And the strength and the muscle building that you well, get from it's the it? only one that really kind of combines triceps and lats, you know, and you get that sort of interesting combo. Yes, it's also this. So trip off this. This totally came to me, right? Most of the effective, the most effective exercises that you could do with barbells and dumbbells tend to be exercises that strengthen what are considered fundamental human movement, right? Barbell squat, squatting, right? Pressing, rowing overhead pressing, rotating, split stance exercises. These are all considered fundamental human movements. Well, what else is a very, what is one of the things that humans do physically that's better than almost any animal, if not any animal in the animal kingdom? We throw. We throw. Yeah. It's this overhead from mm -hmm. back to front motion in our scapula and our shoulder evolved specifically to give us this incredible skill that is one of the reasons why we became the apex predators, right? It's one of the reasons why we were so successful as hunters. We could throw with accuracy. What exercise strengthens that foundational human ah, movement? Better than the going. pullover. A dumbbell pullover. Yeah. No wonder, because I'm thinking about it, I'm like, it's an isolation movement, but man, does it feel like a compound lift in terms of how it like develops strength in my body. I've always noticed that, right? Yeah. It's because it's a foundational human movement. And there's really no exercise that we do that strengthens that kind of overhead movement that 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 is so you know fundamental. Kind of interesting, right? Yeah, you you bringing that up reminds me. I did a video with Jordan Shallow on the pullover. I was looking back at the other day as I'm like in a cut off and like I look like a slob. <laughs> <laughs> back when we first started the podcast, some of the stuff that we used to do, and we had him in the the uh, in the studio yesterday, and and you had a great great conversation with him. And that boy, I tell you, that guy. He he talks at such a high level, yeah. and even when I try and get him to distill it down for the average person, it's yeah. so I feel like it's it's impossible for him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is that even when he gives his his analogy or his example, he still is way over the top with it. I think yeah. it's hilarious. Well, he's just bored. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. bored with the way that we're trying to like you know distill it down. It's like no, this is actually what it is. I don't think yeah. I've ever met a meathead who talks like him like that. No, no. no. I, I don't he's think I have another friend that is that 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 has a vocabulary like him. 
uh, and and uses it the way he well, he's, uses he's it. Hyper intelligent. He's on a different level in terms of intelligence, yeah. and it's not just his verbiage. And he doesn't look it. That's what's so. Uh, that's what's great about, about his brand. Yeah, is mm -hmm. he looks like a meathead with yeah. a beard. Yeah. Like, you know, he's like, like I compared him to Beast on X Men, the, the the blue yeah. you know scientist yes. that was a, very similar. But he's super intelligent because if you can understand the the language that he's using. He makes connections to things and he explains things that uh, he really puts things together really, yeah. really well. So he's, that's obviously why he's been so successful is that he's that combination of application and intelligence. Oh. But yeah, when you're at that level, then it's like it's hard to communicate it. That, like the next level is like, how can I get this so that the average person knows what the oh, hell I'm talking Our about. conversation about the foam roll, Golgi tendon, the transmitters, like the, how, the like counter receptors. Yes. His, his ex explanation on that. I have never heard somebody break it down like that. It was so interesting to me, but it's like a brand new angle. I hadn't even considered. I felt like I was intently listening though. So I yeah. could consume all of it. I mean, it's the average person still, I think it'll be, over the over It'll the be a top couple of weeks and we'll figure out how to dissect it all and like you know <laughs> relay it back to you guys but <laughs> yeah. uh yeah well, we got some work to do yeah what i appreciate about appreciate about someone like him is he he really is explaining the the details and the mechanisms behind what we've observed and explained and talked about because we trained so many people for so long yeah. yep like uh, i for example you know we use the example of the vibrating plate i remember when those vibrating plates first came out i laughed at them like okay what what new thing are they doing now? Why are you standing yeah. on this thing? Until it started feel good. Fi <laughs> enjoying it. Why are you sitting on that, yeah. Justin? Yeah. No, but uh, you know why? Why are people using this? What's the value? And then I went to go use one, and I noticed that because of the way that the thing vibrated, I noticed that it affect my CNS in a way to where I would get into positions that I normally wouldn't be able to get into, create new patterns, go off the the vibrating plate. And now I have new ranges of motion that I can connect to. And I remember uh, it was like, ah, this this has to be like three years ago, four years ago in an episode where we were talking about this. Yeah. Now, he explained the mechanisms. Oh, mm -hmm. it blew my mind when he was breaking down the speed at which yes. it's transmitted and that it's, that it's. I mean, he had the rates, which blew my mind. Yeah, he, you're, knew, you're, he knew the rates at which it, it transmits and it actually moves faster than pain. Vibration yep. does. So, you know what this what it reminded me of? And I said it when we interviewed him. We've all experienced this. You ever touch something super hot, move your hand away, yeah. and then you feel pain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's because your brain un perceives the heat faster than the pain. Yeah. So it's almost like seeing lightning and then hearing the thunder later. It's like right. your brain's like, move your hand away, and then you feel the pain. Mm -hmm. Understanding that allows you to, to train the body in ways to get around those roadblocks so, but he under, he explains the mechanism. Oh so. yeah, I mean we've known for a long time that it's it's a neurological thing happening, not yeah. a phys physiological thing that's happening. So we had pieced that together about foam rolling quite some time ago, and we've talked about that on the podcast. But I've never been able to explain why that is, like mm -hmm. not to the detail that he did when he started to break down the way that the brain receives mm -hmm. that message. And it's just, it's that simple that vibration is, it gets to your brain quicker than pain can. So basically you're just hijacking the signal and tricking the body into almost thinking that it's it's better than what it really is. Right. It's and, and, fascinating. And through shit. that, you can accomplish what you want. Well, and but that's also why it doesn't fix the, problem right mm -hmm. it, it gives it gets, you the tool right to help you. and that and that's now I, I feel like i can explain to somebody who's like why foam roll and it helps ways to treat i can it. totally tell it's working and it's helping it's like well no temporarily it is because it's hijacking that signal and it gets to your brain faster mm -hmm. than actually the the signal of pain coming from your body that it's still technically mm -hmm. there so it kind of hijacks that temporarily so you can do stretches and mobility work yeah. and everything. So okay, so so it reminds me of this. I remember years ago, we all know the sports creams, right? Ben Gay and yeah. Tiger Balm and yeah. all that shit, right? Oh yeah. And you rub it on they your all elbow. Just smell like a medicine cabinet. Yeah, yeah. So it's like if I remember you saying when you played basketball with your dad, he just Oh, it's just like I, I'm like hugging a peppermint tree or something. <laughs> you know, it's just smearing all over me. Yeah. <laughs> Suck. But anyway, I remember as a kid, I even pieced this together as a kid. Like uh, this one, I was like 12 and I'd go to judo when I was young and my knee was hurting and my dad's like, put this tiger ball on. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember I'd rub it on. And even as a 12 year old, I'm like, how is this going to help my knee? It's not absorbing <laughs> to my knee joint, yeah, yeah. but I Just did rub it in. I did feel less pain. So I remember as a kid thinking, how does that work? Later on, I pieced it together. Jessica, she suffers from migraines. And when she, she used to travel with the circus and she'd go all over the world. And at one point, I think she was in, I want to say Thailand or the Philippines. And somebody gave her this 
little bottle of green oil. And really, what it essentially is, it's this really concentrated form of tiger balm or whatever. And what she does is she dabs some of it and she puts it on her head where she feels the migraine and it produces that cool sensation mm -hmm. and she doesn't feel the pain anymore. So she was using this and the same thing. I'm like, it's not, go it's not really stopping the problem. Like, I know what's happening. The cool feeling is interrupting the pain signal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the pain is still there. That's right. You, you're not perceiving you're it the same. It. Yeah. And you don't feel it anymore. Yeah. So that's exactly what's happening. Oh, yeah. It blew like, my mind the, the way he explained it. And the fact that that guy could actually break down each one of the transmitters and the speed at which yeah, they it. transmit to your brain. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, yeah. where do you have that useless information? I mean, I it's know. not useless. He obviously applied it and used it yeah. very well, but... Blew my mind, man. It's such I a know. great conversation. Hey, speaking of with cool him. science, did you guys see what, what scientists did with the pig kidney? Did you guys read about this? What? Is this the pig human that Justin oh, brought up the other day? Yeah. No, no. So check this out. So I'll read it to you. This is in the New York Times. Surgeons in New York have successfully attached a kidney grown in a genetically altered pig to a human patient and found that the organ worked normally. Yeah. So this is a scientific breakthrough that one day may yield a vast new supply of organs. Well, pigs are closest, I guess, uh, you know, species for us to uh, be able to uh, adopt. Like, what, did, wasn't it pig hearts yes. and all that too? Was like something that. What is it about pigs that that's the case? Because I know that we're not the closest to them. We'd be closest the or, to like a, their organs are somewhat uh, similar, similar to enough or yeah. usable. And what they'll do is they'll genetically modify the pig so that your body doesn't reject. Right, the kidney or the or the heart, or maybe it changes it a little bit. So it's, but man, does this now, sound like a sci-fi movie? How, how does, does that, that how does that like work? A, a common sci-fi movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Now how does that work? Because we've understood now that uh, through uh, you, you know some basically through some tissues you store memory, right? And so uh, yeah. now you're you're putting <laughs> organs from a pig inside your body, and. I wonder what kind of okay. fucked up dreams you Okay, have. so what Justin's saying is it sounds crazy, yeah. strange. Right. Look it up. Yeah. Peep, there are... Wee! There you are... Know, you just wake up in the middle <laughs> of the night and you get slaughtered. Yeah. Oh, my God. You, the you, terror. Your yeah. wife's like, yeah. you smell yeah. like bacon. What the <laughs> Bobbing for apples. Yeah, all this oh, is yeah. really weird. Yeah. No, um, there are lots of reports, anecdotes, right, of people who've gotten a heart transplant or a kidney transplant, and then they're... They, their personality will change a little bit or they'll be into something that they weren't into before. Or there was this one story I read where this this husband, I think it was a husband, he met this other man and for some reason they had this crazy bond or woman, they had this crazy bond. It wasn't sexual or whatever. And then later on they found out that his wife who died, that, that yeah. this new woman has the heart. And he's like, I couldn't understand why I was so, like I felt like we were so... Attracted. So there, there's in this a way. lot of these stories. Though. It's not like I mean, again, anecdotally, but like they haven't really put a lot of study into it. But it's like it, it trips me out because like, you know, it gets up in the middle of the night, starts like rooting outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know? who, who knows? Yeah, you guys don't know. Now, what are the? I mean, how was that? This is even possible that we allowed this to go into a human? Like, I imagine there's all kinds of like red tape to get to do that, right? There, or is it just? Anybody could just transplant. No, I don't think anybody. I'm sure there was. Well, yeah, right. Well, so, I, no I mean, idea. I would think that you wouldn't even be well, able to do that. Yeah, legally. would you want to be that guy that gets well, the first that Also, that's yeah. the other question I have. Pig, is like, uh, transplant? Who did they convince they're to like, do that? They're like, we have two options yeah. human kidney, <laughs> uh, $50,000, yeah. or yeah. we have this $1,000 kidney that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Right. Or free because we want to try mean, it out. I mean, you're that guy that's like flirting with the black market, you know, like options at that point, right? And this guy's like, well, we could well, do a pig. Well, let's back up for a second, right? Let's think about this. Genetically modified modified pig. What does that mean? That means it can be a patented pig. So now, because if pigs can't be patented because they're uh, natural, but if you genetically modify it as a pharma company, yeah. you now own the patent on that genetic Ew, modification. A pig farm of just organs. Exactly. Oh, so now you're creepy. a pharma company. You've got genetically modified pigs. Nobody could copy you because you have a patent on it. They grow kidneys, hearts, livers, and whatever. Think of the market on that. Well, what's Doug, what's the black market on organs? Well, forget the black market. Look at the regular market. Well, yeah, I mean, they would the, have to sell in the regular market. I know they would have to sell it, but just there's a reason why there's a black market because there's not good enough point. there's not enough right. or not enough supply for the demand. Very good point. So, uh, that's what I that will give me the indicator on how much that could grow, you yeah. know, that space alone. Yeah, you know, it's sad a lot of people do die because they can't get oh, yeah. organs in time. Yeah, I, I well, think I read this or saw this somewhere and I was actually really fascinated by how big this market is. Like mm. it's like a big deal. Yeah, isn't it like if you have pre 
pre-existing conditions and things like you're lowering the list. Wow, look at this. If you want to legally sell your heart in the US, it can be purchased for about 1 million. Livers, wow. half a million. Kidneys, about a quarter million. Wow, human skin, $10 an inch. Hey. What? <laughs> you can sell your skin. Wow. Huh? Holy shit. There's a market. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure the price is that high because it's also so rare. And if they if they mass produce I've also only I mean, if that's, that's you, Jug looked up legally. Oh, no. Illegally, I bet it's, I mean, half half the price. I mean, that means someone would sell, sell what, a, was it a liver was the highest? What's the heart? No, heart. Kid, kid, the heart is the highest. Heart, heart is the highest at one I million. think the black market's cheaper. Yeah. Well, no, of course it is. That's why it's dude. Dead. How are you only gonna get fifteen hundred for your eyeballs? <laughs> I know because right? you don't that need seems them. Bro. Excessively low. You, it's yeah, not yeah. like a heart. You need a heart. That's why it's the highest. Uh, right? I don't know. I'd like to see things. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I don't it's think it's a priority important. of what you like, and which I mean, I'm sure like things that you don't need are right. probably yeah, lower. Bro, you the... could be blind, but you can't have. A, you can't live without a heart. Right. <sighs> You'd be dead. Right. I don't know, dude. Yeah. Fifteen hundred. Isn't that how they scale? Wouldn't you think that? Right. It would go all of the most important organs. Yeah. That's how it go. But I mean, I suppose. I'd be curious on where keeping you alive. I would want to know where the genitals fall in line with the eye. I don't think you can. Which one is Consider more of a priority. Yeah. Wow, let's look that up. Doug, Doug. could you let us know what's yeah. more? Our- How much is a penis cost <laughs> yeah. on yeah. the market? And I'm sure there's a different range in yeah, price. Yeah, the right? sizes, right? It's- yeah, you got small, <laughs> small, medium, and large. I'm sure the large ones are cost a little bit more. Yeah. Does it? Is there? I don't think you can. I don't think you can buy. <clears> well, penis. you can buy anything. <laughs> there's some. There's what are you definitely. Do with the penis? A didn't we? We didn't we? When we talk about an article about some guy that was jarring dicks and was saving them. Wow. Oh, that was the dude that yep. worked in the. Yeah, he was. So there's definitely a market for yeah, it. Yeah, he no. was. Uh, uh, yeah, what do they call that? Where he had all the um, moratorium. Yeah, the dead bodies. What did that say, Doug? Mortuary. Mortuary. Oh, uh, let's see here. You know. I don't I, think this. I'm not getting any numbers here. Yeah. Honestly, it's. Uh, I don't think they've the done. The sex organs don't seem to be. Uh, yeah, you know, duck, duck, go. Uh, selling know. item here. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think. So that's my question. Transplant. Eyeballs are a higher priority than the genitals. Now, at what point do you guys see that in the future where people are going to be like, when this science gets really crazy and people are going to be like, I want to jump, I want to run as fast as a horse and they. Give you know you know horse quads yeah. <laughs> replace my quads with horse. Well, quads. Don't, there's already a, isn't there a community sure. of people that are already messing with like vision and hearing yeah. and I mean there's already it's already becoming a thing. I you know I don't think we're far. The question I have is that what will be more popular, biohacking and 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 doing weird stuff like that where you genetically modify your body or going virtual. Oh, you mean with oh virtual, or are you just saying tech versus no, just not that's like that or versus, adding chips. It's like what will become more pot will become more because we're we're advancing both those rapidly yeah. right now. The yeah. ability to do this, I mean, real soon here, you potentially could go upgrade your eyeballs and have like you know t- telescopes for eyeballs right coming right. up real soon here. And same thing with the hearing, like ridiculous hearing to be able to to control all that. But then we're also look where we're moving. Like we brought up that e, uh, alter ego for Fox, like yeah. where this virtual world is becoming really popular. And so, is it more likely to see? Uh, I mean, both are going to grow. But yeah, but virtual is limitless. Like if you're in it's the limitless world, and yeah. you're not technically changing, you can get out of it. And you don't right? have you to say, obey the laws of physics. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That's what the, I think. In the real world, you still got to like there's still gravity and shit. Not in this virtual world where. Yeah, you know, they, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they change the code a little bit, and you can do what you that's want. That's why I think the. That's why I think that will pass it. I think this idea of well, the the big there's a big be just few extreme people, and, yeah, that will mess with their body. Yeah, and there's a big debate right now about uh, genetically modifying your offspring. Now they're selling it by saying eliminate predispositions for disease mm-hmm. and all you know these these allergies and whatever. But I'm. It's a very short walk from there to. You know what? Wasn't Here's there the range of in uh, China that uh, yes. they yeah they did what? that too and and it was it, for HIV and, and yeah yeah what, what what happened? They they modified them so that they were resistant to HIV Re- resistant to HIV. But then the side effects were they had all these like superhuman abilities or something. So oh, I don't know about that. Why, no, why, like, why they had like all these like uh, added things? Why like, HIV? Why did they modify them to be resistant to HIV? Well, I mean that's it sounds to me because that's publicly like that's that's not a politically incorrect like if they modify fight them to make them hyper intelligent everybody would freak out but if they said they can't get hiv everybody would applaud because it sounded oh, like a good thing like right a, but it sounded like it got test. backdoored in there yeah. like there was some like intelligence added in yeah well as i was now saying fly. as i was saying it's a short yeah. walk from we've genetically modified kids now to where they don't have any genetic issues to 
well, here's the range of height that my wife and my genetics will allow. We're just gonna we're gonna make sure that they get the the, the highest of the height and the smartest of the potential combinations of genetics. And now, next thing you know, all these we're gonna have these like superhumans. Well, meanwhile, we have the the thing that I brought up the other day with the schools where you can you know modify your kids' pictures. I think that's more likely. Like I think you're le you're less that's likely so to, to see the just, modification of people's bodies. You yeah. know, even though it's happening, I know. Uh, I think it's it's going to be more socially accepted to do things like that, which is what we're... I mean, obviously, if an, a junior high is already doing that with parents and people are, oh, yeah, they're all buying into it and paying five more dollars to have their kids... But you've seen how, like, even Instagram and all these... Uh, obviously, that's been a thing where people, like, adjust and, and, and filter their face, their body, all that kind of stuff. And you've seen how that's actually translated into the real world where you see... You know, these butt transplants, you see like all the weird, <laughs> you know, implants. body types that are just really great on Instagram and then you see it in real life. And you're like, yeah. whoa, this is distorted. Yeah. Yeah. You said transplants, implant. There's, I don't oh. think they have a butt transplant. No? There's no like donors out <laughs> yeah. there? How, how much do I get? Top dollar over here. That's dude. at your funeral. Yeah, it's really <laughs> sad, but I would like to say that 15 uh, people benefited from this. Nobody wants my liver, but they definitely but, want the glutes. Yeah, his yeah. liver's fucked. No, nobody fucked. wants that. It's, yeah, you don't want that. Nobody wants his liver, <laughs> but his ass. Let me tell you, 15 people. Yeah. He gave it to 15 people and did pretty, hey, uh, pretty well. Know, I'll take top dollar. Uh, so speaking of uh, weird stuff, I tell you what, man. If you ever question whether or not the media is a propaganda arm of the government. I'm going to read you a couple article titles. Never do. Okay. I so, believe everything. Yeah. If, I'm going to read you a couple titles of articles. And if you, it, it's like, you know, how can you tell me that you're a propaganda arm of the government without actually telling me? So here's what's happening right now. Mm. So, okay. As we know, in prices are becoming inflated. Okay. Food prices, gas prices. <laughs> Electronic prices. Aren't they trying to say like the economy is booming? Bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. yeah. It, no, it's worse than Shipping that. Shipping containers on ships are just stalled. It's like worse nobody's than getting that. anything. Yeah, the average American now is noticing that they go to the store and their grocery bill is now more expensive for the same stuff or less stuff. And so people are starting to say, holy shit. Part of the reason for this is they printed money like crazy and just gave it to a bunch of people and stuff. And the second thing is there's a supply chain blockage. There's lots of supply that isn't getting to our shores because of reduced production and also because there's, I think there's something like a hundred like or a thousand shipping containers off the coast that haven't can't come in because we can't unload them because of all this yeah. craziness. So you got inflated prices, okay? Not a good thing, obviously. If if something costs a dollar yesterday and today it's a dollar fifty for the same exact thing, you are fifty cents poorer for that one item or whatever, right? Okay. Check out this baloney, right? So this is Yahoo. So Yahoo prints this article. Here's the title. Yeah, I haven't heard from them in uh, since 1992. Here's the title, okay? America isn't running out of everything just because of a supply chain crisis. America is running out of everything because Americans are buying so much stuff. Wow. <laughs> wow, bro. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah, sums it up. Do you know that the Soviet Union, the, they used to, this reminds me of the propaganda the Soviet Union used to tell their their people. Do you know that they used to, because we would show pictures of our grocery stores versus their grocery stores, and that stuff would leak to some people in the Soviet Union, right? They'd see this and be like, oh my God, like we have nothing. Yeah. I have to wait in you line for stuff? bread. Yeah. yeah. And over there, their their shelves are full of food. You know what they used to tell the, their people? Huh. Americans are so poor, they can't buy anything. That's why there's so much stuff on the shelves, just to give you an idea of the twist. <laughs> so that's one. Here's, Always a way to spin it, yeah. Here was another article. This one was from CNBC. Uh, inflation's silver lining. Higher salaries. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, Unbelievable. Awesome. Look at that increase. You know what? I tell you, that's what I tell my kids. I tell my, and I, I, the one thing that I try and teach my kids to, per, to keep them from being manipulated is to understand economics. Because mm -hmm. I think if you understand basic economics, yeah. it's very hard for you to get manipulated it's by It's very hard, though. That's why I, I love that Peter Schiff book, the, the How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes, because it's really hard to, I think, really understand uh, economics from the level that we're all at now. Like we have this- That's on purpose, we have this way. Yeah, we have this massive economy with so many moving parts yeah. and- you know, so it's really tough to t 
teach a kid or even an adult for that matter if they don't if they don't have any background in that like exactly how an economy works mm -hmm. and so i love that he took it all the way back to let's pretend there's 10 people on, on this island, island yeah. and we're in the, and we build the an economy from here and then you start to see like how because it makes total sense like oh it probably started what was the the most important thing was food mm -hmm. right you're on an island so the guy who could catch the fish now has the first ability to probably charge or trade people for something and then you just kind of see how it all builds and he he inserts all the challenges of like how we vote for things to like oh give this to this person and oh allocate this mm -hmm. over here and he gives examples of that in a a more practical like oh what would you what would happen if the main guy who was fishing you all said and say he has to give up half of his fish over to this person what would that do and you go oh that wouldn't work that would completely destroy that or he wouldn't be able to keep be able to afford to keep going and that person would become lazy and then that person yeah. you see it from that perspective but when you look at it when it's this massive machine they that want it built, to be com look complicated and they want people to be ignorant because yeah. it's really easy like look if you're if your salary went up 20 percent, most people know how much they make every month they get their paycheck they see oh i made 20% more. But if the cost of everything went up 25%, you're you're poorer. You've yeah. actually lost 5%. But mm -hmm. a lot of people don't track their expenses that way. Don't pay attention. Also, here's a little trick that manufacturers and producers do is let's say you're going to buy let's say you buy one toilet paper roll for $3 and in that toilet paper roll is 100 squares of toilet paper. And the company sees, oh shit, we need to raise our prices by 20%. Either we raise the price of the toilet paper by 20%. Or cut 25% of the product. Or we cut 20% of, yeah, the, of yeah. the squares down and sell it for the same amount. And people don't even know. They go buy the same product. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm still buying Making bacon. Nothing changed. Yeah, yeah, it's still $5, but you're not getting a pound now. You're getting three quarters of a pound. Yeah. So people have no idea. And that's what they count on. They count on that happening and inflation kills it yeah, kills people yeah, yeah. i gotta bring up the article that that doug sent over because it was a while back when we i mean we first started talking about the, the direction everything is going and you know and i and i think i i made it clear that i i have faith in humanity i just believe yeah. that uh we we have these times and periods in our life where we see these dramatic swings left or right and I really think that we're we've just we've seen this, and and rightfully so. There's a lot of things that need to be corrected. It wasn't that long ago that we were a very ra racist, sexist society. I yeah. mean, it's not even a hundred years ago we were definitely right. like that. So, which is a, a blip, right? So, I definitely think that we it was needed to get corrected. I just think we over we swing back over corrected, yeah. and I do believe that we're seeing the that correction start to happen. And I think that the article Doug sent over is proof of that. Is that you see now like uh, your your Christian schools and homeschooling because of all the curriculum and what's been going on in public schools yeah. that parents are, and because of COVID, everyone being home, kid, parents were forced to kind of dive into what their kids were learning and what was being taught and their teachers and are starting to see that a little bit more. And a lot of them are going like, it's blowing up right now. Yeah. Like yeah. you can't get into like a Christian school right now. They're having to expand rapidly. Like mm -hmm. I think like on a typical year, you might see a couple percent swing up like or down 20%, 20%. oh yeah 10 to 20 percent on yeah. most you know and then also homeschooling is like doubled like it's crazy right yeah now. i think uh it's going to keep moving in that direction because of the ability to deliver information virtually and i think you know what's going to what you're probably going to see more of is you know i want my kids to learn you know these subjects and there isn't one school that does all these subjects the best. Like, I want them to learn math from this place. Mm. I want them to learn history from this place. It's going to move in that direction. And it, it, look. I hope so. It'll be so much better. It, here's the deal. Go to look at col college is the worst. College is the greatest example of how distorted things are. Today, you go in and, and, and you sign up in a college course. And the teacher says, or your professor says, here's the books you're required to buy. And it's, you have to get this edition, which is almost identical to last year's edition, but whatever. How much does that book cost? $300. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on a second. It's the year 2021. I could download that book for three cents, yeah. right? You could sell it to me for 15 bucks and have huge margins. I'm still forced to buy a $300 book, paper yeah. book. Such bullshit. So it's, it's rife for disruption. Yeah. And I think with COVID and everything... 
that's just accelerating. Kind well, of you mentioned on. something that I mean, do you believe that? Because I we were off air, we were talking a little about this, and you were saying that you actually think that this might be a sign of us just being divided. Oh, more. huge. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you think that, and I and I I don't know if I agree with that. I think that this is just a sign of us collectively kind of moving back more towards the center. I think that maybe. 20 years ago, we were a little bit more right. We've been swinging to the left, and now you're seeing a, a more collective movement back towards the center. So the two sides mm. have... So there's yes and no, actually. There's truth to that, and then there's also truth that there's more divided. So the two sides... So if you look at, like, Democrat, Republican, when they actually do studies on this, Democrats moved really far left compared to where they were about 20 years ago. Republicans moved a little bit further right. Not that much... Not as much as the left has, but they still did move a little more right. So they're further away from each other. But here's the part that's where you're saying, which is actually true. There's more independent <laughs> independent voters than ever before. Yeah. There's more people who don't identify with either party now in the middle. So that's where I think what's happened. Like I don't think that all of a sudden uh, we saw a 20 to 30% of people that believe in Christian faith. I believe we see a percentage of people who don't like what's being taught in the schools, yeah. and they're like, they don't really, they, they, and they know that that's not being taught in in in, in I agree, a Christian right. school. No and so, in, even in though they don't maybe believe city. in the faith, and that's not, but they just they don't, they're not okay with yeah. how how radically left some of these public schools have gone, and so they want just that and it's not about all of a sudden there's a bunch more christian people that are walking around it's like hey we know that these schools schools are teaching mm -hmm. this because you're and you're even seeing that by schools are starting to advertise that i know like no critical th race theory will be taught here like they're actually advertising that so people know well, it's the last place like parents actually have a voice you know otherwise everything is just rolled out from the dude, state dude public school is the is the biggest you know they talk about disparities and you know dividing the classes and all that stuff the public school system is the worst. It's the greatest example of that because in most states, not all, but in most states, you have to go to the school that you're that you're in there, whatever district you're in. Yeah. So if you're a struggling family or single parent in a tough neighborhood, you got to go to that freaking school, and you have no choice. You can't tell the, the your public. You can't tell the district. Look, here's the deal. My I want my tax money to go. I want to pick a different school because I, this one's shitty. It's got metal detectors and the teachers don't give a shit and people are getting beat up. I want to go to this school over here, which is paid by the same people. It's still, and they'll say, no, you're forced to go over here. It's total crap. Compare, I'll tell you what, you compare the public schools in some of these rough neighborhoods to the, some of the public schools in these like desirable, expensive neighborhoods, and you will see the most opposite different experiences you could ever imagine. You know, you're talking about tax money and bullshit. I was talking to um, my mom's husband, Lonnie, the other day. And do you know, I didn't even know this, that somebody can uh, marry somebody who's in prison. Like they don't, they don't meet till after they're already in prison. Say they're incarcerated for life, marry them and then apply for welfare and collect a check, a, a free check what? because they're married to someone. In prison. Yeah. What? Yeah. Did Wait you know a minute. That? Did you know this, Doug? Dude, there's so I many did prison not hacks. Know yeah, and, and that's a hack. Like it's so uh, such a hack that it's like a, a very popular thing in areas wow. where there's there's prisons like that, of like people migrating to that town so they can do exactly that hack and then collect a free check now, and live can off. Can you of it. marry one that changed genders that goes to the other one? So they don't, I don't think it matters. <laughs> I don't think I'm just wondering. Fact check me though, Doug, because I I mean he talked. We were literally talking about this last night, and I'm like, get the hell out of here. I have never heard of that wow. before. Wow. And he was telling me that yeah no it's a it's a really big deal and it, it'll destroy some towns because people will move with that intention to go near where these these prisons are at wow just to just to get that hack that's crazy and then bullshit and then it's expensive to to there's got to be a people. name for for that that's why right? that's why I want Doug to look it up there's got to yeah. be I mean if it's become something that's because you, you have like cleat chasers yeah you know for like prison athletes chasers. And, yeah. yeah yeah prison yeah. Marry, marry an inmate Thirsty and get welfare or something like or something. that. I don't know what, what, what we'd call it. I hey, thought that was crazy. Hey, speaking of school and education, Justin, any updates on your on your team oh, and the man. coaching and what's going on? Yeah, I've been she's quiet seen, over here. I was going to say, he seemed frustrated <laughs> the other day about it. <laughs> it's such a bummer, dude. We've been hit with, riddled with so many challenges uh, this season. It's like the bad news bears. It is, dude. Yeah. We, we're at the point where we're, we're hanging by a, a string, dude, a thread of a string. Uh, where So we've had guys like from injury or from – 
it basically just uh, like COVID stuff where like we have to like quarantine. And so I, I can't even go to practice because one exposure, uh, you know, uh, anybody that hasn't been vaccinated because of the mandates, this and that and the other uh, can't like step on the field. And so it's been hard for me to even coach. I've, I've done it up in the box where I'm not on the field and I'm like trying to like, you know, voice uh, the plan from way up there yelling. Nobody can hear me yelling <laughs> on, on the, uh, the microphone, you know, in the headphones. And so it's just been really frustrating. But, uh, yeah, the injury thing is is even the most frustrating for me personally because that, to me, is an indication of the off-season work. Mm. And, and, yes, I, I will I will admit we are super low in terms of personnel. So, like, kids are running, you know, both, both ways, ways and, and they're just getting, like, exhausted, fatigued, oh, and, and just getting beat up. But, like – these things that you get beat up, you just work through. That's part of football. Like you just got to be tough and, and work with like little dings and bruises and like, you know, stuff that uh, you want to go, you know, get a hug from your mom about, but like you need to tough it out. So there's actually been some, some injuries that we've had to address. And, and uh, I've, I've sort of had my hands tied with them, but uh, I want to, I've been able to kind of help in terms of like some of our mobility programs and things to get, kids working on that at home but also you know some of these cases i'm like thankfully now we have somebody to send them to so i've actually mentioned luna uh to two of the players oh, that, that have had you know like some significant uh injuries and in and, and, and are trying now to recover from them uh and they didn't know that was an option like they went to kaiser they went to their you know um you know hospital provider whatever and they only got this like you know sort of a short window of therapy and i'm like look you can extend this and here's how you do it and so i'm going to follow up with them but like i'm very curious to see like how their experience went but i was just, just gonna so ask. glad i was just gonna ask because because um i have somebody that went through them and loved it because they, yeah. they call them they they sent someone to i mean just like advertise they sent someone to their house and they're way more consistent, and it's longer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, so I know a lot it's of longer. Yeah, uh, typically they'll give you like five weeks or whatever. For Luna can like extend it much. Further. Six visits. You're talking about what I was talking about. With my buddy that who just is like this thing is going to blow up because who's a he's a physical therapist, and insurance companies are really really strict, and so they they will prescribe like the bare minimum of therapy because yep. it costs them so much money and he tells me he has to fill out buttloads of paperwork just to get them to renew and be able to come for more for more visits he says it's like pulling teeth to get somebody 15 to 20 visits because you really have to justify why this person needs to be in therapy where he says if you go do like something like Luna, this outpatient way, he goes, they'll write a 20, 20 visit plus subscription uh, uh, um, uh, prescription. prescription, no problem, mm -hmm. because it's so, it's so much cheaper for them. It's cheaper for them. It's cheaper. For, it's cheaper for everybody. And it's a better service. It's so cool. I can't wait till we get the yeah. quarterly updates with them because they are just, they're going to disrupt that entire well, it's space. It's so nice because it's like exactly what they need, you know, and like for them to even be able to uh, come back full full force, you know, they need that I, like hands-on therapy that they, I just, they're not getting. I just never understood the six visit thing. Like I, as a trainer, trying to help someone get stronger, six visits, not okay. Like I well, it's the bureaucracy. It's because there's, yeah. there's money involved in insurance. That's why. So they're going to make it really, really difficult for you to do that. It's not. It's not going to be that oh, easy. Oh, hey, speaking of uh, of pain and stuff, I got to read you this. So I was doing some research on resistance training or weight training and injuries, <laughs> injury rates, I should say. Okay. Here's something interesting. So this is a this was in PubMed, and uh, it was a study done in 2020, and it's injury risk factors associated with weight training. So ready for this? So they studied men and women over the course of a year. To look at the the injury rate between men and women with resistance. Are we, do we, can we guess some stuff? Well, hold here? on, yeah. So, first off, I'm pretty sure you guys will get this right. Who's more likely to injure themselves mm. working out, men or women? <laughs> the yeah. same people that are more likely to crash. Who their has car? more <laughs> ego problems <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's an obvious risk one. taking. Now, I guess. What, so, how much more? What's I was gonna say, yeah. What percentage more? So, I would I would say men are at least double the risk of getting hurt. So, twice women. as much. Twice as much. What do you think? What do you think, Justin? Uh, that's a fair assumption. Maybe yeah, okay. four times. I'd say yeah, maybe three. Okay, so that? so over a one year period, zero point six percent of women experienced the weight training injury. So, so less than one percent, okay. almost half of one percent. Yeah. yeah, 
Four point five percent of me. <laughs> yeah, it's just, so damn near five x, right? Bro, five that's, x times. Of that's yeah. a huge difference. It's so true, though. We could totally guess that. Like, I, I always had a a the challenge with uh, my female clients was getting them totally. to, to push themselves yes. more and take more risk. Yeah. My guys was always like, "No, no you don't need to." Oh, I could do off. it. I could do it. I could do it. Put we, more weight on the bar. Know. Like, well, bro, we know, bro, you're you can do it. You're fine, dude. So. You know how many times I would train a, a, a male client? I don't care how many years I trained him to, and they would do a set and as their trainer i'm thinking to myself like, oh I, I judged that wrong it's a little too heavy <laughs> yeah. and then they'll they'll rack the weight and the you know the bar's a little crooked or you yeah. know whatever they'll rack it up and be like i think i could do like five more pounds or ten more pounds like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no like, like no we're no. going the other no, way. we dude. actually went too heavy yeah, yeah in fact that's 20 pounds too heavy as it was yeah. we need to back off a little bit <laughs> that's so true right yeah yeah I, if you think about it like the the really stupid shit that you would see in gyms I'm trying to think of like the stuff that really stood out. It was all guys. I think it was all men. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a girl do some stupid shit in the gym. I really the haven't. thing I would see women yeah. doing is they would just beat themselves up with aerobics classes or yeah. cardio. I would see that. Yeah. But the really hilarious dumb stuff, like there's the guy we've talked about him before. We all know him because we all managed and worked in the same gym, not at the same time necessarily, but this guy was a a member. But he would walk in, he had a weight belt on always. It said beast on it. Beast. And, and he would go and he would load the shit. And do abs, dude. Oh, bro. Sta he would stack five plates on his chest. Yeah. And do yeah that's it right there. Yeah, yeah. Big old belly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or and then do every 45 on the leg press yeah. and then his friend on top. Yeah, and it would be like yeah, one inch. Me, me, me. Do you remember? I shared Impressive. this I shared this one. You remember that guy who, and I, you guys should know that, remember this too, too. He used to, this was like a kind of, Shorter, stocky, white guy. He was in good shape. He was fit. Um, he used to stack uh, seven plates on each side for bench press. And then he'd have three people spotting him. He'd have a guy on each <laughs> side spotting him, and then a guy yeah. straddled over it was, the top it was of him. A, yeah, so everybody else is doing like a Zurich. Oh, squat. totally. It and was you, a four person lift. And he would go ask like random people. I remember being a trainer and like watching this all the time. And I, I, eventually, Bro, had, me? I eventually had to talk to yeah. him. I said, hey, listen, dude. Um, it, you, if you come in here with your group or your friends and you guys do this, but I can't have you asking random members to spot you on weight you shouldn't be doing. I could do that. Wait, wait. No, you can't. Not if yeah. it takes three people no. to spot you and help you. You can't do that weight. Like so you, that, so you that, can't even do half that weight. Yeah. Okay, so that happened to me once, right? So it was at Hillsdale. And maybe it's the same guy. I don't remember what he looked he like. He used to go to Hillsdale, Santa Teresa, him. and I used to see him in another one. Okay, so it might be the same guy. I don't remember what he looked like, but... The first time I saw him, I watched because I saw him stack the weight on, and I said, "There's no way yeah. he's going to lift that." And then and, I saw, and there him, is no way. Then I saw everybody lifting the weight together, and I'm like, "Oh God!" Yeah. And I would, you know, I see this guy come in, and so one time he's looking for people, and I'm like, "Watch this!" And I went over to him and I said, "I'll spot you." Yeah. He's like, "Well, I need two other people." No, no, no. I'm really strong. I could totally spot you, and I did. I stood over him, and I. I let him handle some of that weight. Now I did have to deadlift half of it, yeah. but I made sure for him to know that, <laughs> bro, you're going to hurt yourself if you dude, do this by yourself. Dude, back to your previous point, I was trying to rack my brain if I've ever seen or even seen a video out there where, you know, a girl's doing a bench press by herself and, you know, doesn't load it properly and it, it, it comes yeah. up too fast. One's like, you know, the, the yeah. classic, right? Yeah, yeah. The one where the, you lose the weight. I've never seen a girl do that. Have you ever seen it? No, no. no. I haven't either. No. Yeah, the, I, they, I mean, we're picking on guys right now. The only thing I see girls that girls do more than guys are all the, the dumb little exercises. That's because they're advertised to do all this. Yeah, thing. that's yeah. A, the, you'll I'll, I'll see that more often than not where they're like, I mean, they're just busting Doing their the ass stair on these, all these, with I'm a like, dude, back. I yeah. want to go over and be like, listen, if you literally just did five sets of squats today, you literally would right. have a superior workout than all that shit yeah. you just did for like the no, last 45 the, minutes. I'll have to claim, okay, the worst one, uh, worst offender in my opinion is uh, uh, the, was a Gravitron? Yes, the yes, leg push, push, down. push down, leg yeah. push down, the Gravitron. Stop doing that, ladies. This is a public service announcement. Yeah. I see dudes do that that's too. Not a, Stop I've it. I've seen dudes I've do see, it too. I've seen guys do it too. Oh, so that's, that's no, hard. I have one. I have one. I actually lit a lady up in the gym. What? Early, early trainer. I was like my 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 fourth month as a trainer. Wow. And I went off because I had a client doing a hack squat. And while the weight was oh, moving, she pulled the weight off the thing. While it I've was had moving, that I've had that happen. She pulled before. weight off of it. In her defense, though, it's wow. like okay. So in a person's defense, I'm like, it's that, moving. That's happened wow. to me. That's happened to me before. <laughs> in their defense, because like <laughs> I've seen this happen more than once. You know, like a hack squat is one of those machines that has like 
you know, six different places know, that dude. you've loaded but and he's we rack moving it. The weight, I know, bro. I know. I She's know. like following the weight uh, and yeah, sliding yeah, it off yeah, at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. What? Like, what are you doing? I yeah, literally yelled at her. Yeah, I've seen people do that before. Like, I've seen people do on the leg press too, like that. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're in the middle of a leg press. You can't take that weight off oh like that. Oh, God. So you hurt somebody. Yikes. Hey, did you guys hear about In N Out pulling out of San Francisco? Yes. So no no I don't think they pulled out because they were shut down for the okay the first the first uh, restaurant okay so that all the restaurants in the Bay Area are supposed to man it's supposed to be vaccine mandate so if you you yeah, have because to they're, who's they're surviving in San Francisco so you oh. have to you have to provide proof that you're vaccinated and they cracked down on In and Out because In and Out wasn't checking and they In and Out came out and said listen we are not yeah, the vaccine not police yeah. Yeah. and we are not going to I'm not going to make our staff ask every single person to proof of their vaccination and so the city said okay shutting you down wow. so they shut them down because of that they're the first example that they've uh, or made an yeah. example well, out of them, that. you are bidding well them southwest i think said they're going to stop uh, requiring because remember they had that where all the planes were grounded i think delta oh that wasn't the weather no <laughs> i mean they still Damn, i think they're still CNN saying told me that. i think delta said the same thing so what is to. happening with that? I haven't followed up on that story. Oh. The last they all like all like a good percentage of the pilots said mm -hmm. we're out. So yeah, and I heard that. Uh, so they were going to be all on unpaid leave, and then I guess the CEO said they're not going to do that or something like that. that. It was like that's where it left off. But uh, again, yeah, Delta I heard, and then also I heard like Amtrak, like one of the train. Uh, companies. We got to be further along on this, Doug. Have you heard anything? Do you know what's going on with that? Because that was like a week or two ago when that all went down. And we're, I mean, what's going on with flights right now? Do you guys know is Southwest back to normal flying, good, or is it, is it like yeah. moving at fifty percent capacity right uh, now? Because like, we're, hit, we're hitting into the holidays, which is going to be like pretty crazy if they haven't, you know, figured this out. Speaking of the holidays, I don't, well, well, hold on, real quick, I got to get one one thing. I got to add on this. This is for your favorite governor of all time, Stop Justin it. Governor Newsom. I have a big picture of him in my bedroom. Obviously, Newsom of Calif. Uh, he's the governor of California, and they have some. We have some of the strict strictest mandates, right? And he is asking for an exemption for a union that sp that gave him a one point seven million dollar campaign. Yeah, yeah, donation. because they <laughs> gave him money. So can you believe that? If you give him money. You don't have to do these. Then things. he pulls the. It's, he does the thing. It's the mafia, dude. It makes sense. It's like the mafia. You said man. one of the. Are, uh, is there? I don't think any other states stricter than California. Is it? We have the Hawaii have, is pretty strict. Yeah, oh, you know, I've been watching BJ Penn post some stuff yeah, on Hawaii. Hawaii is really yeah, on the crackdown. They're are really, they really? Huh? Yeah, yeah, really, really strict. Wow, worse than California, New uh, York. I don't because yeah, they get a lot of travelers yep. from all over the place, so they're very strict. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, yeah. imagine imagine being on that living there and being feeling trapped on there with like that would be yeah. horrible. Well, so much at least their, here, if we really get frustrated, we drive across to another state and get out of well, here. For also, a while. so yeah, much exactly. of their economy is dependent on uh, tourism. So, I mean, I understand the rationale, right? Because yeah. for them, like their tourism makes up such a big percentage of their right. business, and they can't shut down all the time. When we yeah. went there, even though they are, when we went there, uh, there were a, like we went to go get a rental car. Yeah, and the line was. It took me almost two hours to get a car, and I, yeah. fi I finally got to the front. I'm like, "What's going on here?" Yeah, yeah. They're like, a lot of the car companies shut down because mm -hmm. of the, the because of what happened. Yeah, and they just haven't reopened because we haven't really been able to pick up. So we have way less, you know, openings or that can service these people. Yeah, yeah. I got I got a funny story for you guys. It involves one of our our partners, uh, Chile, too. And, and I and I've said this before that you know, Chile saves marriages. Yeah. It also could cause divorces too. I think. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Slow your roll. Wait so, a minute. So, I've been promoting the same marriage yeah, yeah, message. No. She, she gets in bed. Wait a minute. Why yeah. is one side of the bed <laughs> yeah, yeah, warm? Yeah, yeah. What the? So, yeah, why well, we just we warm? we just went up. Right, the the four of us went up to Truckee for you know a, a few days. Right, so we were up there uh, recently, and uh, I come back. And so right now, okay, we're in the middle, and you, Justin, you know for sure because your weather is closer to mine, where uh, it's starting to get pretty cold at night. Yep. So yeah, I have had the fire on lately. Uh, and I like to sleep with the door open. I, all, all summer I've been, that's been kind of the deal in our bedroom. I keep it open. And now it's getting like pretty cold. And so Katrina's been like, we're closing the door. And I'm like, so there's a little bit of contention already. And it's like, oh, it's okay. I've got my Uller, right? And I, that mm -hmm. thing is time to drop to the floor as far as cold. Well, anyways, well, we went to Truckee. I didn't know this. The way I found out was waking up in a fucking sweat at 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> Did she change she, the whole thing? She changed my side because she was so cold with Max in the bed that she would roll over and it was freezing because no one's laying there and that thing just gets colder and colder if no if body isn't, if there's not a body on there. 
So while we were up there, she adjusted mine, didn't adjust mine back. Uh, we were already having the debate about the door being open. I, I concede and go like, okay, whatever. Yeah, my, climb my, in my bed. My ruler will save me. Yeah, I climb in bed <laughs> and fall asleep and then you wake, wake up, up to a 90, a 90 a degree sauna? side of the bed, dude. And like, I was so fucking pissed over that. So <laughs> yeah, so I guess it could cause divorces too. I know I've been touting them as like this marriage saver. You but, know what uh, I noticed with the cool? Mm, uh, just don't tamper with it. You know what I noticed with it? I, I, I've always noticed this. Uh, less joint pain the next day. So less because joint it's pain, colder? I sleep. I sleep harder, longer, fall asleep faster, Just deeper sleep. It's sleep. up. It's up there. When I think of our partners, the things that I use, you know, I use all of our stuff. But there's some things that I use every single day, yeah, and it's like I swear by it. Like the Uller has been that bit of an investment. So the first time, I mean, I remember looking at it going, like, damn, that's kind of a lot of money for this thing. Mm -hmm. Like, is it really worth it? I'm so glad that I did. Because it's one of those things now that I can't I can't imagine like Well my mom swears by it. I got her one and, and so she's finally using it because I mean my dad's a beast. He's like six seven, he's a huge guy, snores like a freaking bear, you know. And so she has a hard time sleeping to begin with. And uh, is very sensitive to like heat, cold, all that kind of stuff, and has been using. She's like, "Oh my god, I just wake up like refreshed," and she's like so energetic and everything. It's pretty cool to watch, you know. Well, it makes I just such a difference. I feel like that. I mean, I at least I don't know anybody who's married at that they both agree that they like the temperature. Nobody's the same. on the same climate. Nobody dude. is. There's no way. You I, you know you 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 no. either have someone who's like going through menopause and they're running at like 120 degrees, yeah. so they want it freezing cold, or you have like the the big bear dad who's like got it. You got to have it super cold, and so you know then you have someone like Katrina who wants it 90 degrees dude, under you, the sheets. You go like, in my house and literally Jessica goes to bed. In pajamas, a robe, and cover. That's, that's Katrina. So and like, I'm, bro, that is Katrina. I'm in my, I'm in my yeah. little underwear without, and I'm out like this, like sleeping like a freaking starfish. And wow. she's next to me, bundled up like we're in the Are you? Are you, you're, are are you an underwear or naked guy? What are you? I'm an underwear guy. Dude. You're an underwear guy too? Yeah. What kind of underwear do you wear to bed? Uh, what, are you trying to get a picture of something? Yeah, well, no. I'm, well, yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm actually trying to get your bikini underwear <laughs> cherry out of my red, head. Just so you know. There you go. Now you got Justin. Yeah. I got that. I don't know it's worse. Uh, I know. Wait, wait, you're, you're, I mean, they, they, hug, they hug the boys very Wait, hold on a second. Naked. You go naked naked? You naked. know why I don't do naked naked? Why? First of all, you got to jump out of bed and some I shit's going down. I need at least one line of defense. Yes. You, that's you, all. You want shit flopping around? I want around. bugs on, and things. I like, feel like that's more intimidating. Imagine a guy is creeping around my car sure. in front of my house and I walk out in my you know, naked? sweats versus me running out naked. Shit's just going... Yeah. You know, and I'm chasing him. Like, imagine how scary that is, right? I'm saying you like, this, guy, this guy fucking yeah. means business. You know, you know what? what? That's terrifying. It yeah. is terrifying. Right. If I right? saw that shit, I'd be like, I'm out. Yeah, bro. yeah. That's I like one out. of the. That's like one of the best strategies to get yeah. out of a fight too. If like someone want to go down, you like take your clothes off yeah. right away. Like someone's like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, there's like, every time. Time. there's like a one in one hundred chance though. You might there'll be the wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then, hold on a second. Like, oh, is this what we're doing? It is a bit of rolling the dice. You know. All right, we won't fight. If you can't fight though, you may as well go that right. I'm saying if you can't fight and defend yourself, I mean. You can fight, defend yourself, and maybe roll the dice. The with other that. thing, because I've done it before. The you other thing two is, options. if I cuddle, if Jessica tries to cuddle with me in the middle of the night, and I'm like, "There's nothing between me and her," I ain't sleeping no more, bro. What? You mean to tell me your little bikini briefs is the difference between you getting a boner it's or not? It's better. It's better. There's at least that that layer <laughs> of protection. It, I don't keeps it so. in there. Otherwise, I otherwise, yeah. I don't. Otherwise, I don't, yeah. Oh, I don't oh, Doug, are you? What are you a sleeper? Do you have like a this underwear? Just you're an underwear. No, I, I sleep hot, so don't, I. Have you to guys be. don't feel like the it's like get the lines run on you and feels too snug and tight. No, you, your you, your business doesn't want to dude. breathe. You are you you free ball during the day or what? What's going on? You wear underwear during the day? Yeah, but I'm also awake and doing stuff, and I can adjust every two minutes if I need to. I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to be comfortable. Whatever, whatever, bro. Listen, this, I don't is why, be restricted. this is why I don't share hotel rooms with It's you. like my thunder vest. Yeah. You know? I know this <laughs> it's like, hey, vest. Yeah. hey, Doug, this is why Adam <clears throat> always requests that he shares a room with Justin. And yeah. This is the reason right here. Well, I, just, I don't I know. The truth is now revealed. Well, what, are the, what are the, I mean, I would love to see the stats on this. Uh, is men in particular, because I think men are more likely to sleep naked, right? Even though I know there's women that obviously sleep naked. Well, I mean, I keep it prison back, tight. Back to your theory, if a woman runs out at a at a, at a burglar naked, <laughs> yeah. it's not to do the yeah, opposite. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so I'm going to wait this out. See how, I'm going to see how this goes down yeah. right here. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> exactly. Which way oh. are you going to go? Which way are you going to go? Thanks. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Look, if you want to get nutrients into your body, you don't just want to take them and then they come out of your pee. You want to get them in your body where they're needed. You want to absorb them. This is a big deal, by the way. A lot of supplement companies pay no attention to this, so you end up with really expensive urine. Well, one company in particular has mastered 
the delivery process. They actually use a process that was designed for pharmaceutical companies. It's called Live On Labs, and they have many, many different products. I like their glutathione. That's really good. They have alpha lipoic acid, B vitamins, vitamin C, and much more. In fact, if you go to liveonlabs.com, that's L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S.com forward slash mind pump, uh, you can actually order any of their products and then get a sample pack of all six of their other products for free. So again, head over there, get your free sample pack, and notice the difference. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Madi from Maryland. Madi, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? First of all, I just want to thank you guys for being the best fitness podcast out there. Thank you guys so much. Uh, a little bit of background about myself. I started working out around when I was uh, 16 years old. I was pretty morbidly obese. I was like 280 pounds. Um, and I dropped weight pretty quickly. Like in a year, I got to like 220. Uh, but ever since then, I've been fluctuating between being, I think, at the lowest 215 to 280, up and down. Um, you, you guys know like the cliche story of basically someone who just does a lot of hit training, uh, does a lot of high-intensity workouts. Um, I did re- I did at certain periods of my, in my life train for strength, but I never, until doing maps and anabolic, which was, uh, I did, I started my first phase. I, f- I started my first run of maps and anabolic about six months ago. Up until that point, I never did like one structured program. I took programs online, like free, free programs. And, um, I made some of my own programs, but I, I never had like a particular program, but I, I did lots of hit training, I did some strength training here and there, but nothing consistently. Um, now, at the current state I am now, I'm about 5'10", uh, 250 pounds when I first started MAPS. Actually, when I first started MAPS, I was 228 pounds. But after listening to the podcast, I thought maybe I should bulk up a little bit to get my metabolism up. Because at that point, I wasn't dropping weight lower. And I was eating consistently around like, 2,300 calories a day and I wasn't dropping weight. So then for the first time doing maps, like all the phases, I was in a bulk and I was just using my Fitbit to gauge where my calories should be. Um, Whatever my Fitbit set up on that day, I was just eating that much food and I got up to 250 pounds. Then after I finished maps for the first time, um, I started it again and in, I guess about... After the first phase, I went from um, 250 to about where I I am now. No, I went from 250 to 244. And I sent you guys some body fat scans. I don't know if you saw, but basically from from the end of the first phase of MAPS to where I am a couple of weeks ago, I dropped about 5% body fat. And I gained about five pounds of muscle. But my question is, right now I'm eating about 2,300 calories um, to 2,600 calories, give or take. I want to know, because I still have like a lot of body fat to drop. My biggest goal is to get to a healthy body fat range, which for me, like I I think I want to be like 15% body fat, maintain that. But I feel like um, I'm worried that because of my past experience, I'm worried that I'm going to drop calories too low and go crazy there, or I'm just going to be eating too much and be in a perpetual bulk. I just want to know where I should be with my eating in terms of my long-term goal, which is getting to like 15% body fat. There's, there's a lot there to help you yeah. with. So, Madi, you let me get this straight. You, you, you went from 215 to 250 during that first bulk? Are you talking about with the when I started maps? Yeah. No, 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 no. I went from like 230, 230, 240 to 250. Okay, which one is it? 230 or 240? Because that because 20 pound bulk is a lot over the course of three months and a reverse diet is a lot. Unless you gain 20 pounds of muscle, which I I, no, he I don't. Gained, he gained five. Uh, that wasn't 20 pounds of muscle. Yeah. I think it was like I think it was like 238, 240. I oh. mean, like the, my weight fluctuates a lot every day, so okay, that's like. The range I can give. Okay, because because there's a couple things here. Uh, first off, when you're trying to do a bulk in order to speed up the metabolism, 
you do want to do it slowly. So that's why I asked you that question. And if you, if it was this like aggressive like weight gain, then what that screams to me is you weren't tracking your reverse diet or your bulk. And, well, and he some, was, but he was going by his Fitbit, which I wouldn't recommend doing. Yeah, and sometimes what people do is they say, okay, I'm going to go on a bulk, and they eat more than they should, and because it kind of gives them a little bit of you know looseness, and they yeah. end up going too far. Um, so okay, so now we're we're at a position here. We're eating 2,300 calories. You want to get that up higher. Uh, so that you can burn body fat and then have a comfortable kind of maintenance position. And it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to recommend that you do a slow bulk. And I think you should do a, so a slow bulk on a pretty consistent basis, but interrupt it with a week here and there of a maintenance or even a slight deficit. So it would be something like three or four weeks of a you know 400 calorie surplus. And then maybe a week of maintenance or a hundred calorie deficit and just kind of stay on that path and let your metabolism slowly build up. And it might take some time because of what you've done in the past with your body and, and kind of the tendencies uh, that you're moving to. MAPS Anabolic is a great program for this. Uh, MAPS Aesthetic, if you can handle more volume, would also be a great program for this. But that's where I would go. I would, I would, I would constantly and consistently with, again, those interruptions of, of maybe a slight deficit – work towards getting your metabolism to kind of speed up and give it some time. Don't do an aggressive bulk. Don't allow your weight to go up or fluctuate so heavily, but do it in a kind of a slow, comfortable pace and allow things to to reverse out. I'll, I'll be even more specific. So I think we have enough information from where you were, where you're at right now, kind of what you did. And by the way, you didn't do a bad job. I think you were kind of close, to be honest with you. I think the mistake was using the Fitbit as your yeah. guide to tell you, oh, eat more calories. Cause those things, those things, I, and I, by the way, I love tools like that. So I, I use them like crazy. I used them all through competing. I think they're a great, uh, another piece of data you can use to help kind of guide you. But if you use it as your true North, uh, you, you can get in a little bit of trouble. And it sounds like that's what we did. It sounds like you allowed it to dictate your calories and you probably did a little more than you needed to. Um, so Absolutely. yeah, so where you're at, this is what I would like to see. I like to see you at 2,500 calories a day for three weeks, pretty consistently every, every fourth week, a week in a deficit to 2,100 calories. So that's only a 200 calorie surplus with a 200 calorie deficit for a week. And you're doing you, the month average out is I think a, a better surplus for you. It's going to get you closer to what kind of Sal is alluding to with the you know, less of a, a calorie surplus and just focusing on on bulking. So I think you had the right mindset. I think you were doing a pretty good job. I think you just kind of overshot it. It doesn't take that many extra calories. And one of the best ways to ensure that you don't continue to stay on that path of over consuming is by interrupting it. Like Sal was saying, I'd, I'd interrupt it for a full week. In that week, I would keep myself in about a 200, 300 calorie deficit for that whole week and then go back to the bulk. Every time you go back to the bulk, my goal for you, if I was you were my client, would to see if I can inch you up a little bit more. So let's say the first three weeks, I say, okay, Madi, I want you to be at 2,500 calories. Let's hopefully it kind of maintains your weight. I don't want to see a big fluctuation. A couple pounds up, I'm not worried. But if I see you moving up pretty fast, I might pull back a little bit. But I'd like to see you kind of stay with your weight around where you're at right now while also knowing that I have you in a little bit of a surplus. I'd like to keep you there at 2,500 for three weeks. Then I put you in that deficit for one week. And then when we go back to the surplus again, I might go to a 2550 or 2600. Mm. And then, and that would be the goal is to just kind of give you an extra 50 to 100 calories, you know, every fourth week until I can get you up to a place where you're like 2800 or 3000. And I know you said in your, I don't, you didn't say it uh, to the audience, but you wrote it in your thing that you're, you feel good. You like, you're, you're comfortable at 2300 calories. So that tells me a lot as a coach that, okay. He likes eating around here. So my goal is to probably get you up to 28 to 3,000 so I can then pull you back down to 23 to where you're eating comfortably, but then your body is nice, consistently losing weight. Now, did you say you're running MAPS Anabolic? And uh, is that the program you're running right now? Yeah, I'm running MAPS Anabolic. Um, basically what I do, because the gym is so packed whenever I get off work, um, I usually run it two to three days a week. But what I do is some days, depending on how packed the gym is, I'll split the workouts in half. So I do like half of day one mm -hmm. on Monday and then the other half on Tuesday and then go to day uh, workout number two 
etc. Oh, yeah. that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. smart. I like that. What do you guys think about like um, tracking progress though? Because the thing is, is like I I do want to drop the weight, but like I understand that the muscle mass is what's really important. I feel good um, whenever I have more muscle. But the thing is, whenever your body fat percentage is so high, it's hard to see like that that reflection in the mirror. Should I just continue to get body fat scans? Yeah. I know that they're not the most. No, they're, reliable they're not. But you're, you, they're not. But if you have the same, if you're using the same one and you're consistent like every month, it actually will be a great gauge. You'll right? see the trend. Yeah, you'll see a trend. So don't get don't get so hung up on if it says twenty five percent or twelve percent. It doesn't matter with the percentage so much. It's okay. You have a baseline wherever it's at right now. And then as a coach, if I give you this instruction to now increase your calories and we follow exactly what I said on that one month mark, I'm going to want you to retest. And the th only thing we're looking at is the difference of where you were when I told you to do the calorie surplus and to follow what I said and where you're at body fat percentage. And if I did my job really well, you've added muscle and lost a little bit of fat and really haven't moved that much on the scale. And if I see a major fluctuation south or north, I'm going to adjust as a coach. So if I see at a month that your body fat percentage went up, okay, well, we added too many calories. I should have only added a little bit, like maybe 50 calories, and I'd go the other direction. Now, if I notice that you didn't really move very much at all, I might go the other direction. So use that as just kind of a, a, a compass for you, not so much you know hung up on the percentage, but if and use the same same place or whatever you're using Use that same same uh, tool every time, same day, same time. Make sure you're like this. If, if you did it in the morning where you weren't fed, you didn't drink much, all that stuff matters. You can really manipulate those. That's the, the negative part of those things is if one time you did it on Thursday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon after you've had two or three meals and a half a gallon of water, and then the next time you test, you test first thing in the morning on Friday, you know, dry, no water, no food that could really fuck the, the swing up and you want to be very consistent with how you do it and then that will really help us decide which way we should go. And if you're not in the forum already, we'll put you in the forum so you can kind of check in with us. So do you have the forum yet? I do not. Okay, so I'll have Doug get you access to the forum and then you know when you hit that one month mark, give us a, give us a screenshot of the before, you know, or th three months ago or three weeks ago, four weeks ago, excuse me, uh, body fat test to now. And then the guys and I could really easily adjust you from there. Yeah. You could throw in also monitor your strength. If your strength is going up, that's a good sign. You can also use circumference. That's another one. Your waist uh, is just your waist measurement. For men, that mm -hmm. is a relatively accurate, consistent way to measure fat gain or fat loss because uh, we tend to store, you know, body fat around our waist. I mean, that's it. If you got strength, circumference of your waist, the, the consistent body fat test, you'll have a really good idea of the trend of the direction you're going. I like Just strength, though, the most, because if your strength's going up and your weight's staying the same or it's going down, there's a good chance you're building muscle and burning body fat. Yeah. it's. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I just want to thank you guys so much because literally like on other programs, you know, you just feel, I feel like so tired and depleted. And I know like this is probably, in, compared to the past, like this is a time where I'm eating like at a slight deficit and I'm just getting so much stronger. And it's just, it's like, what am I, what is this program? You know? So it's, it's, it's really fun. I, I just really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for what you do. It's, it's magic yeah, for sure. It is magical. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for, thanks for calling in. Thanks, Marty. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. That the, the, when you're dealing with somebody who's been really heavy in the past and then they're trying to reverse out, yeah. it can, it's a, it's a, it can be a slow process yeah. and it can be really challenging yeah. to stay consistent with that. You well, know? I think you hit it right on the head when you, you said to him about, you know, oh, you, you, we tell people to go on a bulk and they kind of, yep. you know, Oh cool. I'm on a bulk. And if you follow the Fitbit and you allow it you to tell it you how many, loose. how many calories you've burned, yep. mm -hmm. I mean, you can manipulate the, the shit out of that thing. So again, I, I think I, I like the Fitbit the most out of all of us, but I'm very careful to not, that's not my end. I never used it yeah. for like that, like you, telling me what I should do. Yeah. Really what it is, yeah. is, is the more metrics you have, the clearer the picture. Yeah. If it's yeah. just one metric, you can it's see not the trends. Yeah. Like if it's just body weight, I mean, that doesn't tell you a whole lot. Body weight plus body fat percentage. Now you know more body yeah. fat percentage weight and circumference. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're starting to see a clear picture. Now what about your strength? Right. Now we see the whole thing. That's right. And that's the that's the key because if, if you just go off one me I mean if like if it's just weight on the scale, I mean that's I can manipulate that 7 pounds in one day, you know? Yeah. And same thing with those 
body scan. So when you look at all of them, you get a much clearer picture. And what you want to do is look at the trend, not necessarily stressing over the fact that it went up a half percent or whatever over the last two weeks, but rather over the last three months, which direction is this moving? Our next caller is Billy from Utah. Hey, what's up, Billy? How can we help you? Hey, guys, what's up? Uh, thank you for uh, taking some time to answer my question. This is awesome to be talking to you. Um, a little background. I have been lifting pretty consistently for about two and a half to three years. Um, have spent a lot of that time in kind of a strength phase. So heavy lifting, low reps, um, a lot of linear periodization kind of progress, pr progressing that way. Um, what I've noticed recently, probably over the past three to four months is a, I've been a little bit burnt out on a specific lift and it's been the deadlift um, to the point where when it shows up in my programming, I, I, I kind of really hesitate to, to go to the gym and get a, get a little bit, um, you know, it's a little bit harder to get to the gym just because that's showing up in my programming, which is interesting because it was one of my favorite lifts before, um, one that I made a lot of progress on, but for some reason I've just felt burned out on it recently. So my question is, is, is this something you guys have seen before um, on specific lifts, kind of getting burned out on it? And if so, what could I do in the meantime if I need to take a break from it to not lose the strength and the and the progress on that lift? Yeah, I, I, I love this question yeah. because and I don't think we've had someone actually ask specifically something like this. Yep. But this is uh, this, this has to happen a lot. That's right, and this is a perfect example of why you know that's why there's no perfect program for anybody. That's why there's always an exception to the rule. That's why there's there's more to it than just this is the best exercise that burns the most body fat and builds the most muscle because if my client uh, is just hates doing something and it will even discourage them potentially from going to the gym that day or they just skip an exercise altogether, that's part of my job as a coach to insert something else in there that they enjoy doing that I know has – tons of benefits. Yeah. Or, or taking it out, but it really depends on what you mean by burning out mm -hmm. on the exercise. That'll, that'll determine the answer that I'm going to give you. So what do you mean exactly? Is it that it's hurting you, that you're noticing that it's uh, your, your your progress is stalled or going backwards? It doesn't feel good? Like, what do you mean by, yeah. by burnout? Do you have more stress like in your life and things kind of going into this? Because that's a very demanding lift. Um, so yeah. So, so, so a couple of things on that. No, it, it isn't hurting me. Um, I haven't been injured by it. Um, it's more of a mental block than it is, um, you know, going in and, and not being able to perform the lift or anything like that. So it's more of a, you know, just don't feel like lifting a big heavy bar off the ground uh, when I when I get in there. Um, regarding stress, in my life, Justin. Yeah, I've. I mean, we've we had a we had another kid about a year ago. Um, start a new job in, in March, had a couple of other stressful things. So I guess the last year, the last, you know, 10 to 11 months have been an increase in stress. So that certainly could be adding to it. Yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. like it. So, yeah. um, okay. What program are you following right now? Um, I haven't been consistent on a single program for a little while. Um, I had been following uh, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger by Mike Matthews for a little while. Oh, there's your I mistake right there. there. That's the problem. That's bro. just it, what right? What are you thinking? <laughs> 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 no, <I'm> just, <laughs> <laughs> the guy writes good books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, no, yeah. okay. So you, you were following that, and then and then what do you are, are you currently doing that, or did you modify it a little bit? No, I've I've modified it a little bit. My consistency has not been as great recently. I've still been going three to four days a week into the gym. Um, I recently just restarted anabolic because I felt like maybe if I take a step back on volume and yeah. um, and run through that again, that might help break through it a little bit. But that's kind of where I've I, I've restarted anabolic most recently. Yeah, good. No, that's that's perfect. Okay, so and by the way, do you mind if I go into a little detail because you actually wrote us out your question with more detail? Yeah, so okay, absolutely. So you have another kid. This is kid number seven. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Holy shit. Yeah. This is beyond this is, minivan. Yeah, dude. yeah, bro. That's you need a full blown bus. Yeah. Yeah. God bless yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. God bless you, by the way. And, yeah. and, and you yeah. just became That's great, dude. You just became a CEO of a of a company? Yeah. So in March, um, yeah, the new job was was a CEO of a company that some investors yeah. bought out. So two of probably yeah. the most stressful things Pinnacle I can think of. stress. Yeah. So okay, so what you're feeling right now is that your stress bucket is overflowing and exercise is a stress on the body. 
So, mm -hmm. and that's why it gets your body to get stronger. And, and deadlifting is probably one of the biggest. It of is, all those. And, and if you if your stress bucket is overflowing, the workouts are now no longer helping you, but rather hurting you. Maps anabolic two foundational workouts a week. I think is where you need to go. Mm -hmm. Don't do three, do two. Now you're going to the gym three or four days a week. I also read in your question that this is a good me time for you. I get that. So it's yeah. not just going yeah. to the gym to work out, but rather center, be present, kind of get away from things. Walk, mobility. Yeah, dude. Go. Okay, so two mm. days a week, two foundational workouts for MAPS Anabolic. The other days you go to the gym, mobility, stretching, walking, like do things that kind of rejuvenate your body and make you feel good. And what you'll see is your body will actually start progressing again. Now, mm. back to your specific question about deadlifts, unilateral deadlifts, yep. single leg deadlifts. I, I mean, suggest. you're still doing that movement, but it's one leg, it's way lighter, it's with dumbbells, and it will, if anything, not just maintain your strength in the deadlift, but might actually improve it or increase it. This is one of my favorite strategies because there may be an underlying thing there too in terms of like an instability uh, that needs to be addressed, which then, you know, will actually promote you to be motivated to, uh, you know, go back to, to the deadlift and see what kind of load you can, you can, you can put up. But uh, a lot of times it, it takes that sort of uh, uh, zooming in and, and really like staying in there to see like, you know, Know, the discrepancies between left to right uh, and, and addressing those will really help the overall strength. I, I also want to give you the option to do something completely fucking different. You know, if you're following a bulk of maps and a bulk and the only thing that we're changing out is a deadlift. Listen, I haven't deadlifted in over six months. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not the end of the world if we don't do a deadlift variation right now. I mean, this is a perfect example of sometimes this is where I'll get on a kick and I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get strong doing the Turkish get up. I haven't been, I haven't really focused on getting good at my Turkish get up in a while. And I know that's not in my maps anabolic program, but every time the deadlift comes around, that's what I'm going to do instead. So don't, don't feel like you, and this is why our programs are moldable. This is why we have the podcast this is why we have the forum to kind of do things like this. If you, if there's an, the, an exercise or a movement that interests you or that you know makes you feel better or mm -hmm. you know that you you have a lot of room to get better at like insert yeah. it in there right there i mean i just I, I just this is the area where, yes the deadlift was programmed in there and it was a brilliant written program by us and that's the most ideal thing for pro progression for you to put in there but that's where this is there's a lot of room to to play with that because sometimes that shit doesn't you getting an extra quarter of a pound of muscle over the next month versus de-stressing right. and having better balance and being a better CEO that trumps that. Yeah, me. well you're not going to gain that quarter pound of muscle if your stress is That's right. overflowing. That's right. That's right. It's just, it's not, not going to happen. Are you um are you taking any supplements right now? I am. I'm taking a, I, I take creatine, I take a fish oil and I take a multi. Okay. Um, I, and vitamin D. So, so. Look, look into ashwagandha. Okay. It's mm -hmm. probably one of the most well-documented herbs to help the body deal with, to deal with stress. Okay. So, and, and what it does essentially is it literally, it's a very powerful adaptogen and it allows the body to deal with stress and adapt to stress a little bit better. Uh, I personally use it, you know, I'd say every two or three months I'll throw it in or when I feel like I'm not getting good sleep or, you know, I'm, I'm much more challenged with stress. And I do notice an improvement in, in how I feel and how my body reacts. So you can read up on it, check it out. Examine.com is a great website for looking up supplements. Uh, but mm -hmm. aside from that, you, you know, what we're saying with the workout is I think where do you need to go? And don't be surprised if you start to progress again, but also consider this. This is the most important thing. Your workouts should be to improve the quality of your life, not necessarily to improve your quality of your workouts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes it's to improve your workout performance. But what's more important is I mean, you're not a professional, you know, lifter, right? You're a CEO, you're a dad with seven kids. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that your priorities in life are probably not to be the biggest beast in the gym, but rather to be an amazing dad and a great CEO. Just be stronger than your kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so use the workouts to make you better at those things. So sometimes that means, like Adam said, you go to the gym, you're like, man, I feel like doing something totally different because that's what's going to make me feel better. And if you do that, believe it or not, in the long term, you'll progress because you're going to make better choices and decisions for yourself. Great, great. That's great advice. Thank you. Uh, I think... Um, yeah, some of that stress relief kind of focus might be might be what's needed right now in the near term. So 
um, we'll give it a shot. All right, Billy. 100%. Thank you very much. And uh, are, are we going to go up to 10, 11? How many kids you want? <laughs> yeah. Cutting us off. Yeah. Whole, whole I, 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 think, I think seven has, uh, has overfilled the cup, as you guys say. So <laughs> you're, yeah. you're a champion, man. All, All right, right, man. Thanks for calling okay. in. Yeah, thank you. Bro, talk about uh, like it makes you feel weak. Seven kids, CEO. Dude, I'm oh stressed my. out. <laughs> and hey, and he works that. out consistently. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one because uh, I think we forget right that because we know where we were before, so we think, ah, oh, you know, two days a week that's too little for me. Mm-hmm. It matches your lifestyle, and and sometimes that's totally appropriate. And ba- I've done this where I'll back off. And voila, my body progresses and I go, oh, this is a lesson I have to keep learning. Well, I think what you said that is even more important is it's not always about progressing in the gym. Yeah. I know that's what our business is surrounded around. I know that's what makes our program so amazing is all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you, you, you hit it right on the head. This guy is a, a father of seven and a CEO. His number one priority isn't I got to show that I can get my bench press up to 315. No. Like yeah. who gives a shit? I know mm-hmm. he he obviously doesn't care that much about that, but we always get this in our head all the time that you got to be seeing all this great results. You have to be the best yeah. at everything. Yeah. yeah. Just keep them healthy, you know, sharp and strong. I yeah. mean, those are like very like realistic things to focus on. And I and I totally relate to this right now being a, a newer father of the three of us that that's where my priority is. And then and then actually performing in this job. I mean, I've got a lot of responsibility when it comes to our business business and a lot of things on my plate. And if I'm so focused on my workouts that it's taking time away from those things, then, uh, and so my workouts are completely modified right now. It's to stay healthy and to be able to perform at those things. That's where my priority. Now, go back two and a half years from now, it's was chasing Sal on the deadlift or getting ready for a stage. Well, that's a different story, you know, and yeah. eliminating a deadlift at that time when my goals are so focused on that is something that I probably don't want to do. But in a case like this, like who cares? Well, and even that sense, like it, it, it's always amazing, like how little you can do to keep moving the needle forward. Totally. You know? And right. I think that's the message that we're always trying to kind of uh, drill into people because it's, it, it really is less as long as it's like very structured and, and you're smart about it and, and you listen to your body. You're yeah. going to get a lot of results. Yeah. And the irony is this, right? The right dose. I know he'll probably progress. Yeah, the, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Here's yeah. the irony. The right dose will get Get you there the more than that is too much and less than that is too little and won't get you there right so it's the right dose so here's the irony you train the way that we're talking yeah. and over time you make more you get better gains and better results anyway right you yeah. know so it's not even like you're trading one for the other if you want to progress you still have to do it this way our next caller is elijah from texas hey what's up elijah how can we help you hey so um had a question about uh, some TRT diet stuff. So a little bit of backstory. I, former Air Force, got out. Um, I got lazy, got fat. Had the realization that I needed to make changes. So about three years ago, I peaked at about 314 pounds. We basically changed our entire lifestyle. I now maintain about 235, but have been dealing with some symptoms of low T for a long while now, even after the fat loss. So, um, thanks to some of the conversations that you guys have had on the show, especially, um, Adam, I pursued that and am now two weeks on, um, the initial dose that they're putting me on for TRT. Um, already within a few days, I'm starving all the time. Um, so right now I maintain about 3000 calories and I don't know whether I should kind of stay at maintenance for a little while. Obviously, I, I got to get used to everything. They're going to dial in the dose. But after that, do I stay at maintenance and try and recomp or push calories up slowly and see how I respond? And if so, how long before I should probably jump into some type of um, you know, cut phase? Because I do still have some some body fat to lose. Yeah, no, g- good question. A couple things. Um, do you mind if I ask what your testosterone was at before you went on TR- TRT? Uh, so the initial diagnosis test was like 320. Oh, yeah. I had another test at like 290 something. And then they did another one that was like 357. Okay. And in starting dose, do you, do you mind if you let us know what the starting dose is in milligrams? Just out of 100 milligrams a week. 
You're only oh, on 100. That's okay. it. You're yeah. not. You're not with Doctor Rand, then, are you? No. Yeah, you must uh, not be. No, work- it's a local clinic that my insurance covers. Oh, I see. Okay, Doctor Rand is the best in the business, so I would go there. And he, he usually starts people off higher. Nonetheless, uh, what you're noticing is quite normal. So testosterone is a metabolism boosting hormone. If they give it to men who don't even work out with low testosterone. They'll lose body fat and build muscle without even working out. So it just shifts the way that your body uses nutrients and where it shuttles them. And you will typically, if you look at the research, it takes about four months or so before people start to kind of settle down. So initially, sometimes people feel way more energy. Libido goes through the roof. That'll settle down a little bit. And their appetite goes up quite a bit as well. These are actually good signs, okay? They're good signs. It's telling us that the testosterone is doing its job. Uh, but also realize it's going to settle after about four or five months. Typically, again, if, when you look at the literature. Now, if you were my client, what I'd recommend is to go with it. I would say, look, here's the deal. Stick to whole natural foods. Prioritize protein. Eat until you're satisfied. Okay, Don't eat until you're stuffed. Eat until you're satisfied. And that'll keep you probably where you should be. Now, if you eat hyperpalatable foods, uh, processed foods, I should say, your, your calories are going to go up naturally. If you don't prioritize protein, you're more likely to eat too many calories. So high protein, whole natural foods, continue doing your workout, and then just eat until you're satisfied and kind of give your body what it needs. And what you'll probably notice is you're just going to gain muscle. And then what happens is the body's fat starts to come down because of the metabolism boosting effects of the increased muscle mass. I'm going to predict that at some point they're going to probably increase your testosterone dose, 100 milligrams a week is uh, typically barely a replacement dose from, from what I understand. But again, you can get a, a consultation from someone like Dr. Rand and what they'll do is they'll go over what your clinic's doing and then give you some advice and you can go back to your clinic and say, hey, this is you know kind of what I want to try. But this is not a bad sign. This is a no, sign that your testosterone's it's no, working. He's, you're you're in a great place right now. You're in a great place right now. Uh, in the, the fact that you're already consuming three thousand calories, uh, and I know your question is asking us, you know, what you should do, whether you should cut, bulk, recomp, what what you should do right now. Well, the answer is you can kind of do anything. You're in a healthy place calorie wise. Um, you obviously your uh, your your metabolism is speeding up, and you're and you're hungry. You're now I personally, if I if you let me tell you what to do, what I want you to do, I mean, your body is basically primed for building muscle and it wasn't so much not that long ago. Uh, with your testosterone levels as low as they were, now that you're supplementing with testosterone, you're gonna build muscle better than you ever have before. And so I would want to go with that. I'd wanna instead of going into a cut right now, which you could because you're at a healthy amount of calories, I'd rather put calories on and really focus on getting strong and building muscle. And I would want, so if you're a client, I, our goal would be, okay, Elijah, I'm going to, I want to keep inching your calories up until you get at a place where you tell me like, Adam, that's, uh, this is, I don't want to eat all this food. And then I go back the other way with you. So I'd keep inching you up trying to build strength until we reach a calorie intake where you're looking back at me saying like, uh, I feel like I'm eating all day. I don't like this much food. Can we go the other way? And then I'd bring you the other way and, and try and land you somewhere kind of probably where you're at right now, calorie wise, but work you up to probably 3,600 plus. Yeah. I mean, keep, keep this in mind. You're, this is this is a very good sign. If you feed your body properly, you're going to be fine. Yeah, you'll build now, muscle. if you take this increased appetite and then eat a bunch of processed garbage, then yeah, you're going to prob- you're just going to gain muscle and body fat. So you'll get this huge bulk <laughs> effect, right? But if you eat whole natural foods, prioritize protein, what you'll do is fuel muscle growth and then your metabolism will boost. And then at about like month three, four, five, now you're going to start to burn body fat, and the body fat really starts to come off your body because of the, the sped up uh, metabolism effects of what's happening right now. So not a bad place at all. I, again, feed your body. Just stay away from those foods that you know are engineered to make us really overeat because then it'll just be too much of a compounding effect. Okay. I'm, I appreciate it. That's awesome. 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 Elijah, what workout are you following right now? Um, I do my own programming. Um, I do, I've been doing a push pull legs six days a week. Okay. Modulate intensity and, you know, volume. Yeah. I'm going to put that. I'm going to send you maps aesthetic. If you don't have that great program for building muscle. Uh, I think you're in a good place for it right now, especially if you've been doing what you've been doing for a little while. So if you don't want to have access, uh, we'll send that over to you. And then if you want that consultation, you want to inquire about it, you go to mphormones.com and they'll look over your current protocol and then 
tell you what they think you know would be would be good for you okay that's awesome i appreciate it no problem thanks for calling in thank you yeah this is a a, a different situation right than the average person yeah no i mean but what a great place to be eating three thousand calories still hungry taking your testosterone levels 290 300 and probably now shooting them up to 900 plus Mm -hmm. i mean your body is just you know so i guess you know he could go and cut right now if he really if because he's he's got extra body fat but i would much rather you keep building muscle yeah feed feed the metabolism it's already trying to you know bump up and and you and who knows how long he's been training with this low of testosterone which mm-hmm. uh you know we've all experienced low levels of testosterone and know what it's like to try and build mu- it's very hard to build muscle yeah. when your testosterone levels are on the floor and one of the best parts about getting on hormone therapy is having optimal testosterone all yeah, the time which makes it a lot more fun oh yeah i mean now now so long as you don't eat like an asshole like yeah. it's, sal's talking about i mean you you will add and build muscle and speed the metabolism up i would go right with feeding the body right I, now. I tell you what though just kind of a, a side note it, it, it is quite sh- it was very surprising to me to real and of course this makes sense this is true for any business right the difference in expertise and recommendations oh yeah from one clinic to another well I he mean, sounds like he's at a clinic i was the first time yeah that's mm-hmm. what i'm saying when you went to that first one and they were he started you off on a hundred and you're looking at your numbers and you're like i still i feel better but i still and then you go talk to dr ran and he goes you know that's important, but we also got to go based off of how you feel. And yeah. it can fluctuate depending on the man and androgen receptor density and all that kind of stuff. A hundred is in, you know, typically, typically not low if you're going to go on replacement. Well, my, so, my takeaway from it and my experience is that you, you'll get these clinics like this and ageless men was like that. And I think that they're, uh, they, Kind of like how uh, NASM would tell you not to shoulder press deeper than 90 yeah. degrees. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a safe, like, well, we don't want to risk yeah, going to- safeguards in place. Yeah, so let's let's be conservative and put you on the lower end when in reality, it's like you could handle double that, no problem. They inched me up like 10 milligrams at a time. I know. By the time I got to Dr. Rand, you know, I'd already inched up like four or five times and he still was like, oh my God, I would start you at almost double that. That's nowhere near. Yeah, you. and it's, you know what, it's old school- um, uh, it's it's a it's a old understanding of testosterone because the the research now not, not even now for the last twenty years shows it's only because it was a controlled substance because for a while there oh athletes are using steroids mm-hmm. but no 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 it's not it's of all the hormones you need to be careful for testosterone is a pretty damn safe hormone so this like fear around moving it up is totally unwarranted and I you know I, like I said when you talk to people who really know what they're doing it becomes quite clear so. Our next caller is Ruth from Washington. Hey, what's up, Ruth? How can we help you? Hey there, guys. Really happy to be here. Thanks so much for taking my email. Um, so I originally wrote my email because I have about 20 pounds left to lose, and I really want to do it through weightlifting alone, but I just can't seem to find the right mix. So a little bit of background about me, and I feel like my story can be extrapolated to many people, uh, particularly women, but men probably too. Um, so I'm 39 five, nine, uh, originally gone to fitness through cardio, a uh, surprise, surprise, did a very uncomfortable marathon at one point, um, eventually found a really high cardio dance fitness class and ended up instructing that for a number of years. Um, and then at the end of that, I kind of got, uh, through that time, I lost a lot of weight, um, after my last baby who is now eight. Um, And at the end, I kind of started dabbling into weightlifting, felt like I loved it, uh, just felt really good in my body, started with some five by five. And um, I really wasn't able to sustain all of that with my teaching. And I was in grad school at the time. So um, had to kind of focus on the cardio with my uh, classes that I was teaching at that time. Long story short, um, I graduated from school, started a full-time job as a nurse practitioner, and um, ever since that time, I kind of gradually increased my weight a little bit, um, but I started uh, strength training regularly about three years ago. So I'm kind of in this place where I'm wanting to lose these last 15, 20 pounds, having a difficult time, um, and 
time is very precious. I have three school age kids, uh, plus a full time job, which is one reason why I love weightlifting because it is um, so efficient. And um, I know my body was made to do it. Um, my problem is when I reduce cardio, I seem to have a harder time losing weight consistently. Like I really want to just do the weightlifting because it feels the best in my body. Um, I've tried various calorie macro setups. I've tried various kind of programming. I'm currently in phase three of MAPS Anabolic right now and um, really liking it, kind of staying around the same weight. Um, I am tracking. We can get in the details of that if you're really interested. Um, I listened to your podcast about why women should bulk and I was like, yes, I am on board. Board. So um, after a spot check and realizing I wasn't eating very much, I, I did increase my calories and did that for about three months. So I got up to 1800 or so and felt um, actually my workouts were feeling fantastic as you'd expect by increasing calories and um, was doing pretty well with that. But realized after three months, I had gained some fat along with that, which um, I wasn't really a fan of. So um, I'm kind of in this place where I really want to bulk and increase my calories, but I can't seem to do it without cardio at the same time. So I'm really curious, um, trying to figure out that optimal dose for me. I think a lot of other people probably are in the same situation. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, yeah no. this is really common. Mm -hmm. This Good. is this was Katrina when Katrina and I met. This was uh, she was strength training like three times a week, running three to four times a week. Her way of kind of maintaining her weight or getting in shape would be to ramp up her runs and just run more. And she was probably eating about 1,800 calories or so. And by the way, okay, so she's well maintains like better shape today at 40 years old than she did in her 20s, only strength training and not running and consuming over 2,600 calories. So it's very much so doable. Uh, and I think you were heading on the right track or at least in the right direction. And maybe what happened when you put on, maybe you put on a little extra body fat that you didn't like, or maybe it wasn't that bad at all and you were more in your head and then you decided to reverse back down. Because if you are only eating 1800 calories and you're exercising this much, we need to, what we need to do is speed your metabolism up before you get to a place where you can completely cut out cardio and stay at a place that's sustainable with just weight training. It's just your, your calories are too low for all the activity that you're currently doing. And that's why you're feeling that anytime you cut out cardio, which is probably burning, you know, a few hundred extra calories every day that you're doing it, uh, is making a difference. That's a big difference yeah. when you're only eating 1800 calories. And it says, it says in your question, you're, you're running or doing spin for your cardio. Yeah, um, I have been, I just started spinning again a little bit. I haven't been running recently. I'm dealing with some kind of SI joint stuff. So running is no bueno for me. Um, I've been doing mostly walking right now, actually, and just kind of started to add in spin back in um, about 30 minutes, maybe one or twice, yeah, there's, twice there's, a week. There's nothing necessarily wrong with cardio, but for what you're saying, you know, you don't want to do it. You'd rather weight train, plus you're trying to speed up the metabolism. I would stay away from the spin. Walking's fine. It's it's healthy for you. But here's something else you can do, okay? Because I've done this with clients. All right, we're going to cut the cardio to get the metabolism speed up, but we want to kind of burn more calories in our workouts to, to kind of help a little bit with what might happen initially. You can add volume to your resistance training. You've been following MAPS Anabolic. I would go MAPS Aesthetic. It's a very similar program with more volume. You're going to burn more calories in the workout. It's still a muscle building program. And then I would cut the cardio out. I mean, you do the you do MAPS mm -hmm. aesthetic, three foundational workouts a week with two focus sessions. That's a decent workload. You don't need to throw any cardio in and then slowly reverse diet. Get your get your calories up. Eighteen hundred is not really a good place to start from if you want to try and burn, you know, lose weight. I'd like to see you get up to, you know, twenty five hundred calories at least. And so I, love I that. <laughs> yeah, so do that. I mean, focus on the muscle building, right? Maps aesthetic. You can cut the cardio if you want to keep walking because you enjoy it and it's good for your health. That's totally fine. Don't do the spin classes. That's probably the worst for what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and now you're doing more volume in your workouts, right? So now you're lifting more weights, which does burn more calories as well, but it's still geared towards building muscle. And how long, honestly, uh, were you able to keep in the bulk in terms of like being able to, uh, you know, stay there for a few months? Uh, you know, like how, how long was it? So I was doing another program, um, a hypertrophy boost hypertrophy based program through girls girls gone strong they have some pretty good programs too um i love your guys's trying um different things it was about three months 
that I that I tried that. Um, I wasn't tracking my food the whole time. So 1800 is probably about where I was at, which to me felt like a lot of food coming from where I was at previously. Yeah. Here's, yeah. A, here's a strategy. If, you, if you're not one to want to count and track everything, just track your protein. So try and hit your protein targets and then avoid heavily processed foods and just eat until you're satisfied. This does not mean eat until you're stuffed or really full, but rather until you're satisfied. So focus on protein, whole natural foods, and then train to build strength and then kind of allow your body to do what it's going to do. That usually moves people in the right direction. Now, if you want to get more specific, I would definitely track. For some people though, tracking is, it makes it worse or it makes it a stress or they right. feel like oh, I don't want to, you know, have to I count would, everything. I would also be interested too. So the the program that you were running, the one that you said was hypertrophy focused, uh, I'd be curious to actually see the programming if that means it's more ten to fifteen rep ranges, supersets, and kind of focused in that direction where you're probably chasing the pump more um, versus like a five by five type of protocol. It was actually a mix um, of, it was similar to your guys' there was four weeks of a kind of um, strength okay. focus and then and then there was kind of a, um, a higher rep uh, focus at the end. So because I because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna benefit the most from a you know strength focus five by five type of a routine for for bulking, right? When you're trying to bulk, um, that's when I would I would love to see you. And then we would I mean, we just talked we just talked to another person had a similar question. I would just interrupt the bulk every third week or so, third or fourth week with a one week uh, mm -hmm. calorie deficit. So run the bulk for three weeks straight. After the three weeks, then then drop your calories two or three hundred calories lower than what you would consider maintenance. So if maintenance is eighteen hundred for you. Uh, one week out of the month, run a 1600 calorie week. And then the other three weeks, uh, stay in more of a bulk. Uh, and that will probably help keep you from putting on uh, much body fat at all on, on the way up. And then the goal is every time you go back to the bulk is trying to increase the calories a little bit higher and higher until we can get you a place where you're more like 25, 2600 calories. Uh, that that is a, a more sustainable place to be calorie wise to be able to never do cardio and get yourself lean because then if you can get if we can get your maintenance at 2600 and you say to me hey adam i want to lean out a little bit it's coming up on summertime or whatever i like to drop a few pounds of body fat we can easily without doing any cardio go from 2600 down to 2000 and your body's going to yeah. lean out real nice and you're still eating a sustainable amount yeah. of calories versus if you're at 1800 as a maintenance with doing cardio if all of a sudden you want to lean out, you got to drop. Yeah, you got to drop to a place that's just not. Yeah, you got to get down to 1,200 calories. Yeah. yeah, you'll eat more than you are now if you do this right and get lean. Yeah, yeah. okay. It is possible. It yeah. is, I mean, it seems like very daunting, but like to to kind of stretch it out, you know, even further and and do it very gradually is is my best uh, advice. Yeah, Maps Aesthetic. Follow Maps Aesthetic. Cut out the cardio. You've got plenty of volume in Maps Aesthetic. You're working out five days a week. And, you know, follow what we're saying with the nutrition and watch it creep back, watch it slowly creep up and be patient. Allow that to happen. Uh, when you get to a good place, you, you do the cut, it'll feel, you'll feel better than you do now. Ruth, are you in our forum yet? Um, I am not. Okay. So I'll have Doug give you access to our forum too. So you can kind of check in with us. I love when we give people kind of prescriptive stuff to do as far as diet goes to kind of just check back with us in a month and just let us know kind of your progress and where we're going. We can help guide you better that way. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. No problem. Yeah. The, the Taking someone who's done a lot of cardio and then telling them reverse, cut the cardio out. It's like they'll do it for a little while and yeah. then, ah, got to go back to well, what I know, you know. Yeah. Especially when your background is in like spin and running yeah. and, you know, and you love that kind of stuff. It's really hard to go against the grain. Well, it's a, it's a mind fuck. And this, she's in a very similar situation. Katrina was, I actually wouldn't let Katrina weigh herself during this time. Yeah. So, so it mess with her head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So as I, I, yeah. I knew the inevitable is going to happen. I cut your cardio. I tell her to stop running, you know, 10, 15 miles a week. I completely cut that out. All focus on strength training I, and and increase your calories. I know I'm going to put some weight on her a little bit and weight mm -hmm. that she may not like. So the last thing I need is her looking at the scale and seeing three pounds. It's not for, working. Yeah, right. You don't know what yeah. you're talking about. So I was like, okay, part of the rules are don't look at the scale. Just trust the process. Let me do this with you. And then it, you know, it took a while to get her there, but we got her to a place where she can eat 2,600 well, plus calories. Because otherwise, you're just in this sort of manual 
place where you have to always kind of shave that down by adding this little bit of like excess movement and cardio. And so you're going to be in this trap of always trying to like, you know, shave off the fat, build, try and build muscle, not quite effective yet, but then shave the fat. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you're spinning your tires. Well, dude, 1800 calories. She's working out five days a week, yeah. including spin, including working out like not sustainable. Yeah. You're just not going to be able to maintain that. Yeah, because uh, you, when you think about that, her 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 resting metabolic rate is much lower, much lower. So if you well, yeah, you're doing, she's active. Yeah, if you're doing all that work to maintain at 18, that means if she wasn't doing any of that, she couldn't eat much more than 12 or 1300 calories without yeah, putting body fat exactly. on, which is not a good place. You want to be able to be at There's a place no flexibility there, right? Where if she ate 1800 with no activity, her body would actually lose. If that's the case, we need to be somewhere up in the 2500 plus type of range metabolism wise in order for that to happen. Totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. We have guides that can help you build muscle or burn body fat, improve your mobility, squat better. We even have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. And if you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam. <laughs>